once we have detailed some of the use scenarios in a particular use case, the next thing that we're going to do is create a Windows navigation diagram, which is another word for a state machine for the interface or the screens. In prior assignments, we created state machines for, I believe, a scanner, all of the states that a scanner sh can go through. We're going to see if we can create what could be considered a state machine for the screens that are involved in the login process or the login use case. So we're going to map out the individual screens that might be involved in the process as well as the events that will cause transitions from one screen to the next. Now when we're drawing up a navigation diagram or a state machine, the only thing that we're really concerned about to begin with on each one of the individual screens are the objects on the screen that would cause the screen to change states. So we're not concerned about pretty pretty graphics or back end or color or text or input or output. The only thing that we're concerned about are the components on a screen that could cause the um, UI to change state, which is another way to say to move to another screen. So to start things off, I'm pretty sure when they're trying to log into a system, there is some kind of a landing page. On that landing page, there's going to be a lot of text and images and a lot of um, input and output, but there is going to be potentially some kind of a button or a hyperlink that is going to say something like log into the system. I'm going to assume that it is a button. So I'm going to draw a crude button object that is going to be on my landing page. There is one more important piece of information that I need to know about the individual components. I need to know what is called a stereotype. I need to know the type of object that we are looking at. So stereotypes are going to be written between um, less than and greater than symbols. And each one of the individual pages and objects on the page are going to have the stereotype. So I'm going to come here above the landing page and I'm going to say that this is actually a window and I'll put it between the less than greater than symbols. My login is actually going to be a button and so I'm going to put that between um, the less than greater than symbol and then I'll finish drawing the box for my landing page. So if we're talking about a state machine for the UI, it would seem that if I click the login button that it's going to take me to another page, either another window, maybe some kind of a pop-up form that's going to ask for user credentials. And so I'm going to um, design another one. Maybe this is going to be a pop-up form. Instead of a full page window, we'll make it a pop-up form. On here, there's going to be some text that is going to ask them to log to enter their username and password, but I'm only concerned with the objects on the screen that have the potential to make it change state. So let's say that there is another button here, and this button, when they click it, is going to be um, some kind of a submit button to try to log into the system. So let me fill in this button that is going to be on my credentials page. Um, I'm going to give this the top, the title of login form. And then I'm going to draw a transition from the landing page to the login form. And I'm going to draw the event that is causing the transition to occur. And the event is they're going to click the login button. Now that may seem obvious, but the idea is to indicate the event that is causing the UI to change states. So now let's go to the login form. When they, commit, when they click the submit button, it seems like a couple of things can happen. One of the things that can happen is they can get in and get to the regular opening page of the software. Another one is that something can go wrong. They need to try it again. So I'm going to create another window that is going to require them to try again. All right, so I created another window that I called Invalid Credentials. There's going to be a button on there. There'll be some kind of a text that will say that didn't work. Um, and then there's going to be a button that says Retry. The event that is going to occur, this transition to occur, is if they cl click the Submit button. I'm just going to say Click Submit since uh, it is obviously a Submit button. So there is a, a transition that would go back from the invalid credentials window back to the login form is if they clicked retry. 
So I'm actually going to add a couple of other components to this invalid credential screen because maybe instead of retrying, maybe they actually want to try to recover their username and or their password. So I'm going to add a couple of more components to this invalid credentials in order to allow them to do that. I actually made these two components hyperlinks. So the stereotype inside the less than greater than quotes is hyperlink. One says reset password. One says reset. Oh, I take that back. One password. The other one should say reset username. All right, much better. So if they click either one of these hyperlinks to reset the username or password, that is going to take them to another form. And so I'm going to create another screen over here that is going to be a form which is going to allow the user to try to reset either their username or their password. All right, so I've created a form that's going to allow them to cover, recover their password. I'm going to put two buttons on it. One if they want to uh, recover the password through an email and another one if they want to recover that through a text message. And then I'm going to put a transition going from the invalid credentials windows to the recover password form. And then I'm going to put the event that they are going to click the reset password button. So they also might want to reset their username. I'm going to draw another form that allows them to reset their username. So I created a form to recover the username. Maybe I have decided that the only way that I want them to be able to recover their username is they're going to have to key in their security code or their answer to their security question and then I'm going to send them an email that will allow them to reset or recover that username. So this is going to, um, they're going to click the reset username. Now notice that I am not including any of the input boxes or the text on the field that would say what is your, the answer to your security question. I'm only in can including the components on the screen that would cause the um, UI to change states or move from one screen to the next. What I am going to do is draw a transition line back from both of these recover screens because once they do that, it's going to take them, it would seem like it would take them back into the sign in or potentially even the landing page. I'll say the event that is causing it to go back to the login form is if they click the reset button, then it is going to take them back to the login form. Um, I'm going to draw my line way under here and we'll just draw it up here. The same thing will happen if they recover their password that they are going to click. I'll just call it the reset um, button. We did say that there was one other thing that could occur. If the user clicks the on the login form, they click the submit button, is it could just take them to the opening screen. So I'm going to draw one final window down here that is going to be a window and it is going to be the opening screen for um, once they have successfully signed in. And then I am going to add the event that would cause them to move here. I'm going to say click Submit. What I might like to do is um, I might like to add a guard condition that says if valid because I actually too have two events that are causing a transition and then I'll add a um, guard condition on this that says if invalid so that I can tell the difference, whoops, I can tell the difference between the two events or the outcome of the two events. So this is an example of a Windows navigation diagram, aka um, a state machine for a user interface, specifically for the use case called logging into the system. Now, I didn't model if the uh, system caught on fire and um, burned a hole in your desk, which was number four, and I didn't um, model getting in as someone else. I know in, that those are, um, as a matter of fact, I also didn't do number three, even though number three is much more likely than number four or five in the login in outcomes. But I did model the two most common outcomes, logging in and forcing them to try again. And then we did add to that um, the ability to recover username and password because maybe I didn't think about that when I first did my user scenarios. And when I first created that list of outcomes, maybe I didn't consider the fact that as a part of try again, they might want to actually try to recover either one of those credentials. This is why designing the user interface is just as iterative as designing the back end of the system because the more I think about it and the more I plan about it, um, the more detail I can get 
maybe I overlooked some things that we will be added. That's so we have added um, recovery processes or recovery screens that I didn't think about when we were first modeling the steps.